Good afternoon, friends. It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. How you doing? It's January 5th, and I am starting the first seeds of 2024. So, um, mostly going to be vegetables today. I do have a few flowers I'm going to start, and there's two different processes for this. So, for my flowers, um, I'm doing soil blocks using my small blocker. This is a soil blocker. Um, it's got 20 um, cells in it, so it's 20 soil blocks. So on <clears throat> one of these trays, this is just an old um, tray from like when you get something, meat or whatever, uh, or even vegetables um, sometimes. This, is a, this tray holds two of these <clears throat> soil blocks, so 40 blocks, 40 seedlings. So I'm going to do 20 each in this tray of um, verbena, uh, benariensis, just verbena. That This is going to go in um, some out of the farm and some in my uh, cottage garden off to the side of the house. And uh, cyanoglossum, uh, Chine it's, it's Chinese forget-me-not, but this, this variety is called firmament. So that in that tray. In my second tray, I'm doing more cyanoglossum. Now I have some of these already out at the farm, but a lot of them did get attacked by birds, so I'm starting another round, um, and we've got space for them out there. So again, more cyanoglossum. This is the florette packet, and it's not in color, but you can see kind of the line drawing of it. Um, this one is blue showers, and then I have one called mystery rose. So there'll be 20 uh, seedlings of each. Um, so 40 seedlings here, 40 on the other one. That's 80 seedlings of flowers. And then the rest is vegetables. Those I'm doing in uh, six packs. These are the, um, the six pack um, containers from, I get them from Epic Gardening. Um, they, you, they work with American Trade Company and these things are super sturdy, very, very hard plastics. So they're gonna be around for a very long time. Uh, plus they have these really nice big holes on the bottom that you can poke your seedling out. And there's um, these slits on the side help the, um, the seedling to get air pruned, the roots. So when you, when you leave them in for the right amount of time, you get a really beefy seedling that has um, a lot of roots in there um, and they've been air pruned from the side. That basically means that like when they hit the air, they're gonna stop growing. And so you're gonna have a lot of root mass and not just long trailing ones that you get sometimes if you have them in different kinds of trays. All right, so. In these packs, I'm doing uh, two types of chard. So in, I'm gonna do only three plants of each in some of these because um, I already have some of these growing out in the garden. So some of these will get planted, some of them are just backups. Um, this one is celebration chard, and then I have a peppermint stick chard. So there'll be three of each um, in a six pack. I, <laughs> This is my, some of my seed organization. I have, basically, I have these boxes um, that I set up in order um, the, the packets of seeds that I'm going to be starting for that week based on my spreadsheet. Um, I'll show you all that actually at the end of this video, so in case you want to set up your own system. Um, so in another six pack, I'm going to do three um, Brussels sprouts, Long Island Improved, and three green globe artichokes. I already have three artichokes out in the garden, but I kind of would like a few more. Artichokes are a perennial vegetable, at least here in my zone. Um, and so uh, I would like to have them there so I can have more and more production. So I already have some cabbage growing in the garden, but I'm gonna do some more. Love cabbage. So I'm going to do a one six pack, three each, uh, Copenhagen Market and a Brunswick. Um, so this was a very large head. So that's in one six pack. And then the red ones, I'm gonna do this red acre, which I already have out there. And then this one, the tet noir. Um, so another red cabbage. Final six pack is going to be collards. I love collards. This is the Georgia Southern variety and some red Russian kale. All right, and then I'm gonna start another tray of greens for the chickens because they absolutely love the last one. I put that tray down and they demolished it. Um, so I'm going to start another tray for them and also a little pot um, for Raven because she loves greens too. Finally, 
when I'm all done with this. Uh, we are going to get some rain tomorrow. Not a whole lot, but some. So I'm going to direct sow some seeds, flower seeds, in my cottage garden. Uh, the, the ground is bare in places there uh, because some of the annuals have died back finally, and so the perennials are still there, but I have some open space. So I'm going to put in some more lupin. This one is... It just has perennial lupine, so I think it's probably a blue variety. I have pink out there as well. Um, and then some verbascum. This is Mulane, Shades of Summer. And California Bluebells, another native. So I'm going to go ahead and get this um, soil mix set up. Now, I already, I already have a bucket here that I have pre-mixed. This, um, this is my seed starting mix, and it is made from my compost, from my compost bin back here behind the greenhouse, um, sifted out so it's very fine grained. I use, I use this sifter so you can see it's a very fine mesh so that I can get a really lofty fine grain bit with no wood chunks or anything in it of my compost. Then I add worm castings from my worm bin or if I don't have a lot of worm compost to harvest, I have a bag of it here. <laughs> then add a little bit of bone meal a little bit of green sand, and usually some mycorrhizal fungi. And I like to use this. Um, a little bit goes a long way. It's pretty expensive, but I'm not using a ton of it. And then I mix all that up. Uh, this is a peat-free compost. Great for um, these guys, no problem. It's a little bit tougher with soil blocks because you need, the reason peat is usually used is because it holds the soil together, it holds moisture in. So for the soil blocks, um, I've also added very finely shredded uh, paper. It was a product, I don't think I have the bag anymore, oh, it's called pit moss. So very finely shredded um, paper and moss and it tends to hold the soil block together. I have tried coconut coir and it's okay but it tends to uh, not be in fine, tiny, tiny pieces. And so you get all these like, it's almost like roots. And so the soil blocks are a little less fine. <laughs> so um, I don't really like using cocoa core for, for soil blocks. It's totally fine um, using it other places in my soil starting, so in my seed starting. All right, I'm gonna get this stuff hydrated because it's been sitting here in this bucket for quite a while. And then um, we'll start sowing all these seeds.
placing these guys under a humidity dome, not so much to keep the soil humid because it's it's pretty cold and it hasn't they haven't dried out, uh, but to help retain some of the heat. I noticed that with these seedlings over here, which are doing well, uh, they took forever to germinate. They weren't germinating basically after being on here for almost two weeks. So as soon as I put the humidity dome on, then they started to germinate. And it and it wasn't about moisture. It was about retaining some heat. So even though these are on a seedling heat mat, they're just not getting enough heat to germinate unless I have these domes on top. So that's what that's for. Now over here, I've got some onions that have come up. The, the red ones have not, which is interesting to me. Um, there is some pink celery. Um, I've got lots of violas. That's mostly what's in these trays. Um, some more celery and some delphinium, which have not germinated, which is fine. They might still come up at some point. Um, yeah, so pretty much all the violas have started to germinate. So um, let me take you inside and show you um, my seed store, uh, my seed organization so that um, I can show you how I keep track of all the stuff that I'm starting. Um, and um, I have a piece of software that does it for my vegetable garden. And then I have, um, I use a spreadsheet for my flower farm. Two different systems. Um, and uh, the, the software is brand new for me this year for the vegetable garden, but I think it's gonna work really well. Uh, because the thing is with my vegetable garden, sometimes the work out there falls behind uh, or between the cracks because I'm so busy out of the flower farm. So I think it's helpful to have this. Um, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here we have the farm planning spreadsheet that I use for the flower farm. I've been doing this for about four years now. Um, this, this sheet has changed only slightly in over that time. Uh, I have the months here and I have the weeks here. So in the Farming world, we generally talk about things uh, in terms of the week and not the date. So uh, the first week of January is week one. Last week of December is week 52. There are 52 weeks in a year. Um, as you will see, the first week of February is week five. So um, when I go to order um, supplies or you know plugs or seeds or, or tubers or whatever, I will be asked, what week do you want them delivered? And so um, we kind of all work off of this idea of weeks. So I have the column for the crop um, and the growing method. So am I going to be sowing, sowing them in saw blocks or plug trays or direct sowing them? Uh, then the number of what I, how many um, I want to do. So like today I did cyanoglossum, uh, firmament, blue showers, and mystery rose. So here's my variety um, column. And I sowed 60 total. My growing conditions, um, I lightly covered them with vermiculite. Um, sometimes you, uh, I, like for instance here, sweet peas, I cover them and I will pinch them once the um, seedlings are a good size. Um, some, some seeds need light to germinate, so that's the don't cover or lightly cover. Uh, and then others want it to be dark, like asters, so you cover those. So I make notes of all these things. This spacing column, I don't really use anymore. This was basically a spacing one for transplant. Um, so I'll probably get rid of that column. Uh, so in the notes area, I talk about the variety and then uh, different notes like the verbena I sowed, showed, uh, the verbena I sowed today is slow to germinate. So it was important to put that note there whenever the last time I, I sowed was because otherwise I would forget that. And so maybe after 14 days, I'd think that the seed was bad, but no, it just takes a while to germinate. So, okay, so this is the list I use. You'll see that, uh, you know, we're getting off to a slow start for flowers here, uh, but in February, it really picks up. Lots and lots of seeds being sown each week in February. Uh, same with March and, and April, but then it starts to slow down because, you know, we're in the summertime and everything's in the ground. And then mostly what's being sown is weekly sunflower seeds. And then in September, I do a huge sowing of all of my uh, fall planted hardy annuals that will be ready uh, to harvest in the spring. Um, so that's how I track for the flower farm. Now I come up with these dates of when to sow what based on my frost dates and what 
works for that seed, what is required for that seed. So my in my area, I'm zone 9B, technically our last frost date, or at least the published one, is February 15th, but the empirical data I've been collecting over the last three to four years uh, indicates around March 30th or sometimes later. So I'm going with a March 30th date. Um, so you'll see here if, if a seed says, so four to six weeks uh, from the last frost date, the, here's weeks from last frost, so I can go, okay, four weeks from my last frost would be March 4th, and that is week 10. Um, so I'll know when I go back to this thing here, I can go down to week 10. Here's all the seeds that need to be sown four weeks before my last frost. Okay, so that's that's just how that works. Now, I also have a whole bunch of other stuff, other tabs in here. Uh, I have a harvest sheet. I keep track of uh, how many stems of each flower I harvest each week, uh, and then where they were used, which, which sales channels, the CSA, um, workshops, that kind of stuff, wholesale. Um, I have a flower availability chart that, uh, it, this is not complete by any means, I actually haven't filled it out in two years and I need to update it, but um, it will tell me what is available when, and that's great for planning. So something like narcissus, uh, daffodils, they usually come in for me um, the final week of February and they go through March and into the first week of April. So this type of planning is really important when you're going to start planning for, let's say events, or selling wholesale, et cetera. It's nice to know that. Um, this is when, for me, these things start becoming available. I also keep track of the bouquets I make each week. So which varieties go into them, how many, you know, how many bouquets I made, which cultivars, the stems, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have a shrink sheet as well, which is like, hey, if I'm growing a certain variety of sunflower and only 15% of them ever really produce nice heads, then I want to know that. That means that I've lost, or that's shrinkage, I, shrinkage, I've lost productivity on the others. And so maybe I don't want to grow that variety again. So I keep track of that. Um, and then I have a seed inventory. So this is, I have this down here as the vegetables and then up here are all the flowers. So I keep track of all this stuff. How many seeds do I have? For amaranth, I have these varieties and they're from these companies, these seed producers, and then I have this many seeds, basically. Uh, so let's say I finished using these Eschberg ones, I will highlight this um, row in red and so I'll know when I place the seed order next, I need to buy more of these seeds. Um, and then I have a bulb corm tuber ordering sheet. This keeps track of all the things that come in that are not things that I grow from seed. So Lysianthus, I have a whole bunch of these coming in um, actually in February. Um, mums, these are arriving in May. Uh, all of the tulips and ranunculus here, these already are in. These are the ones I placed last year and um, they've already arrived. And then I, you know, I keep track of the cost and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the dahlias, I've got lilies coming in in March. So yeah, keep track of all that stuff there. And then I also track stem pricing because I have to, when I'm selling wholesale, I have to say how much a bunch, usually it's 10 stems per bunch, um, how much it costs. So I base these prices um, on, I'm a member of two different wholesalers at the San Francisco Flower Mart. So I can base my pricing off of their information as well as the uh, flower market in Boston. Um, so basically I don't wanna be the lowest one and I don't wanna be the highest one unless I have an amazing product that nobody else has, right? So this helps me price my flowers. So that's how I run the flower farm, um, at least some of the planning behind the scenes. Now for the vegetable garden, I'm starting uh, for the first time to use this new software product called Seed Time. Um, I am not sponsored by them. They have no idea I'm making this video. So uh, I just I just started using this and I think I'm gonna give it a try for the year. Uh, I think there is a free version, but I did a paid version because I wanted to be able to put multiple gardens in here. So I have my home garden and then I have I've started setting up the flower farm, but it just doesn't work as well for me as the stuff I already showed you. Um, you can do successions in here. You can plan successions in here, but I haven't, um, I haven't really gone into depth on that yet. Uh, so basically, here's the, here's the yearly view. I added in every 
I entered every crop that I'm going to grow, every crop, every variety. So what you're seeing here is um, all of those things. Uh, tomatoes are red, corn is yellow. That is was already picked in the system. You can change that color if you like. Um, but this is the whole year here. And you can also take it down to um, the monthly view. So let's look at January. Um, you'll see things that are, so here's today. Today I seeded artichokes and so it's blocked out. Um, I also seeded a Brussels, actually, I'm glad I looked at this because we need I need to change something. So uh, for next week, all the other stuff that I seeded today was for next week's project or next week's job, but I went ahead and did it today because today's Friday and you know it's close enough. Um, so uh, there's a task list over here that shows you, this is what this week was. Um, I seeded the artichoke, so I clicked that and then it marked it off on the calendar. Now, if I go to next week, these were all the things that I said I completed, which I did, but it marked them as completed uh, next Wednesday. So there is a way to change that, the start date, I can change that to Friday the 5th, because that is the day I actually seeded them, right? So today I, is the 5th, this is the day I seeded these, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark all these down to that. Um, and I'll go back through and do that, but now we go back to the calendar. Okay, so now it's going, is showing that I seeded these on the 5th, like I actually did. So I'll go back in and I'll change the date on these guys um, that I haven't done yet from the 10th to uh, the 5th. So when you set these up, you go in and you say, I'm gonna add this crop. Let's say I'm gonna add uh, beets. And there's a lot of things that are already pre-populated in here. Um, you can choose from the drop down if your variety's in here, or you can add it in yourself, add new. Um, let's say I'm gonna do this variety and you can even give it a label like where it's located in your yard. Uh, customize the color. It's it's already beets are kind of this color, so that's choosing that, but you can click on here and change the color from a color wheel if you like. Um, the information that's in here is based on either the seed packets that these come with or, and I didn't put this in, it's auto-populated, um, or uh, basically just like the knowledge that we have about each individual um, variety. So uh, you can, this is seeded relative to the frost, but you can also change it manually. You can say, I don't really care about when my frost date is, I'm putting it in the ground on this date. And you can, you can do that. You can select a seeding date. Um, it's for this spring and summer season, 2024. And so it'll tell you, you want to put it in the ground four weeks before the last frost. Well, basically this is the seeding date. So it's either when you, when you seed into soil trays or whatever, or you, or you direct sow. They recommend direct sowing for this one. You can change it to transplant if you want. Um, but in general, uh, beets and other root crops like to be direct sown. It will give you row spacing and plant spacing um, suggestions, and then it'll tell you the days to maturity and then the harvest window um, and how often you, sit, you should do successions. And then down here, you can, if you're winter gardening, you can tell it, I'm gonna have one cover um, or I'm gonna have two covers, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you schedule it and it pops it in the calendar for you. So. That's how that works. Um, it also comes with a journal. I like to, this, this is basically like a blog, uh, but nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> um, I like to keep track of the weather and what's going on in the farm. But there's not that much in here right now because it's been kind of quiet, but as soon as the season really gets going, it's gonna start getting full. Um, there's also a classroom, uh, which I think is only for the paid options and it's everything, it's how to start you know, start your gardens, soil testing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a community and a store where you can buy seeds and things from them. So yeah, so I'm gonna give this a try this year, um, see how it goes. And if I like it, I might put the flower farm on here as well, but I, I kind of like having them separate, honestly. So we'll just see how it works with the home garden. I think it's gonna be great because it tells me not only when I should be starting seeds, but it's also in the tasks, it's also telling me things like, oh, you need to cultivate your lettuce or it's time to harvest or, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of nice uh, because like I said before, things can fall through the cracks with the home garden. Um, and because I focus most of my time goes to the flower farm. So it is nice to have um, something that kind of 
uh, pings me to remind me <laughs> what should be done this week. So I hope that that made sense. <laughs> what I do with that information, so for the flower farm, that, um, that uh, spreadsheet that shows you the weeks, then I label each week and put the seeds behind that tag what needs to get started that week. So that way I can just grab this group of things for the week and take them out to the greenhouse to start seeds. So I keep them in boxes like this. Um, this is the one for the vegetable garden. I need to add, uh, add more to fill this out. I can move on to weeks eight and nine and 10. <laughs> um, but that is how I, um, organize my seeds, my seeds starting and, uh, how I get everything orchestrated and planted and hopefully done on time. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful for somebody. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I have compiled my spreadsheet that I use from a lot of different sources. Um, and there's lots of different potential options out there. You can make your own and it works just fine. Um, or you can check out seed time, you know, see what, see what sounds good to you. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful time in your garden and playing with seeds and your seed catalogs. And I'll see you in the next one.